Welcome to Pod Nuts Daily for July 25th, 2008. And probably the first thing I want to talk about is there's over 100 members now in the Pod Nuts forums. Last I checked, it was 101. It might be even more by now. So uh, thank you guys who have joined. I hope you're finding the forums helpful and informative. I hope you're contributing in the forums. And, uh, you know, I love trying to make that the forums a great place to um, – to get help and to give help if you want to regarding computer repair. Okay, the Dell Inspiron. I think it's a Dell Inspiron 510 or 500 something. It's a laptop. It's one of the 12 inch laptops. Real small, cool little computer. Customer brought one in with a bad power jack. Now, I really dr- I'm starting to dread these Dell power jacks that have. They're not like a normal power jack where there's positive and negative. There's three different, basically, levels of, of voltage on these, or two levels of voltage and one ground. And it's the power jack that has a real thin, like, outer rim and a pin in the middle. So there's three contacts you need to worry about instead of two. Also, the way the jack is constructed, there's workings on, like, the internals of the jack that sometimes they get loose and, and stop making connection, and you, the only way to, to fix it is to get a new jack. You can't actually look and see what the problem is. You just know that it's not making a connection. Well, today I got a little um, little creative. This particular computer, customer must have dropped this computer. It was cracked in a couple places, and the jack was all bent out of shape. But it was still securely attached to the motherboard. Just the ground connection for the jack was not making a connection. And it wasn't as simple as like, oh, I could just solder this lead to that lead. The lead I needed to solder to is hidden under the underside of the jack, which is soldered to the motherboard, which I could not get to. So uh, I got a little creative and just drilled a little hole through the underside of the motherboard into the spot on the jack where I needed to solder. And I just took a little, small little screw, and I screwed it into that hole, which, and the screw is now making a contact with um, where, it needs, where it needs to connect with on the jack, And I used a screw because I wanted to make it a solid connection. And I could not fit a wire and solder through the hole in the motherboard that I made. Um, Use the screw to make it the connection. And the screw is already in the spot it needs to be to make a ground connection on the motherboard. So um, get creative if you need to. I mean, those jacks are not fun to take off motherboards and resolder. There's like eight pin connections. And they're really fragile. And they're really small. And they're really tight. You got to... um, it takes a lot of um, patience to do one of those repairs. So if you could get away with doing a fix that you need to make sure is going to last, and uh, I'm sure this screw is not going to go anywhere, um, go for it. You get a little creative if you need to. Uh, power jack repairs are great money. You could charge a lot of money for those repairs. I only charge 99 because I just, I'm still in my frame of mind where I like to tr- not charge a lot of money. Uh, it seems to keep my customers coming back, you know. Um, but... Other people are charging maybe 150 200 bucks, maybe more for that for that job. So if you could repair power jacks, get a little creative, you can make even more money. All right. Um, did a parallel install on a PowerSpec computer. Now, PowerSpec is the brand of computer from the store Micro Center. Um, I, I have a Micro Center near me. I buy parts from them locally, but you can also – they also have a website you could order online if you – if you want, I don't have experience with their online sales, so I don't know how good they are, really, as far as the online stuff. Anyway, we did a parallel install on a on a power spec machine. I did a parallel install because the customer had a lot of information on his original Windows install. Um, he had a lot of programs installed, and I wanted to keep his original operating system intact in case he needed to go back there for any reason. It, the operating system wasn't completely non-functional it just was really flaky and it was just from my my um estimation it was beyond repair that's why we did a parallel install kept his installation intact and made a menu at the the beginning of the when windows loads saying which which windows installation you want to install into the new one or the old one um now to get do a parallel install to be able to when you do a parallel install your my documents folder and the new installation is completely blank nothing in it so what you got to do is drag, go to the user folders of the old operating system and drag all this stuff into the new one. Well, in the forums, the Podnuts forums, I think Simon, I think it was Simon, yeah, Simon Zarafa, 
um, posted a tool called Fabs Auto Backup. And if you want the URL, you're going to have to go to the PodNuts forums. It's in the PodNuts Daily section of the forums. And this program looks like it will – it's perfect for parallel installs. It will actually transfer all the data you need to from the old installation to the new installation. Um, it says this package works from either regular Windows XP install or from a Windows PE, such as BART PE, Ultimate Boot CD for Windows, etc. This package will back up the following folders. Shared Documents folder. My Documents folder, Users Windows Desktop Content, Internet Explorer Favorites, Internet Explorer Cookies, Outlook Express Messages, Settings, Mail Accounts, Rules, etc., Windows Address Book, Microsoft Outlook PST Files, Microsoft Office Activation Files, Opera Cache and Bookmarks, Mozilla Cache and Bookmarks, a bunch of other stuff. Anyway, those are all the things that we've been manually trying to uh, re put into the new operating system. So we didn't want to test out this program on this computer because we just... We want to do it on a different time when uh, we don't have a customer's information depending on it. But I'm definitely going to check that program out, and we'll probably start using that. So that's a great tip from Simon. You can check it out in the PodNuts forums. Um, today we did a job, power another power supply job. Went to a Micro Center, got the Zion 450-watt power supply for 25 bucks. installed it into his computer, per, um, booted up perfectly. That was a job done. Um, we had a major lightning storm. I don't know if you guys heard Mitch talking about it the other day. Um, in this area, just a major thunder and lightning storm a couple days ago. And, you know, it was scary, whatever. You know, I was worried about my own stuff getting fried. But the next day, we had about three calls for power supply replacements. And uh, my dad looks at me and he goes, you know, I think I'm starting to like lightning. <laughs> so um, if you're having a lull, you know, try to do maybe do a rain dance or something and, and try to get a – a storm going through your area, and then you guys could um, drum up a little bit more business for yourselves. Uh, finally, have a computer had iTunes. A woman was trying to install iTunes on her laptop, and whenever she tried to install iTunes, it would get 75% of the way through the installation. Uh, it would it'd be where the spot where it's copying files. That's what it says in the iTunes installer. It's copying files. All of a sudden, it would stop copying files and say, I cannot write to a specific folder. And the folder was in iTunes, program files, slash iTunes, slash some folder in the, in the iTunes directory. And um, so I went in manually to that directory, and I tried to delete that whole, the whole directory. And I was going to reinstall iTunes after I deleted that directory. Well, it says uh, data redundancy error. I was not allowed to write or delete that directory. So I said, all right, well, enough of these Windows permissions junk. I just wanted to get this done fast. So I loaded up Nopix. And 